Welcome back, everybody, to the Gears Pro League for Split 2 Fresh Start. Vacation's over with. It's time to get down to business. I'm Taylor Reflections Noble, joined by Jacob NVPR. Buddy, first and foremost, you're looking fresh. You got the lineup. You got the gold chain back. That was introduced in Split 1. Now it's back again in Split 2. You're looking fresh. That's all I got to say. How you feeling? I'm feeling good. I'm feeling like the vacation is not over just yet, or at least at least that's how I feel. Look at me, man. I'm just cruise sailing. I'm feeling good. <laughs> Saying you're ready and for the beach still, or what? Fresh. I, you, I definitely am. I might have to make a trip back to Cancun later this month after the back pandemic slows down again. After it slows down again, though. But I feel like there, there's one team or a couple players that have a chance to wreak havoc this season. I think so, man. You know, it's I, I'm excited. I'm pumped up to be here. But I, I'm also nervous in a way because this is the first time we've had so many changes uh, literally to every single roster. Plus, we have plenty of fresh faces joining into the mix and also some returning who haven't been here in, uh, you know, a couple of splits. They're not going to be rusty by any means, but they're going to be ready to go. But still, uh, so many changes, Jacob. But can you remember the last time all these changes took place, like at least for every single roster? Because I can't. Uh, I, I think there might have been a few times going from Gears 1 to Gears Just in two, Gears 5. Just in Gears 5. Gears Hold up. Oh, just, not just, the whole history. Never just in Gears 5. <laughs> never this bad as anything shifted. But uh, th but that's what I'm talking about. It's never been something that's happened in game like this before. In the history of yeah. the game. It's something where you go from a season to another. It's something that happens when you go from one iteration of the game to another. Like I said, Gears 1, Gears 2, that style of thing. But never have we seen a roster mania of this magnitude. This is like a 7.5 on the Richter scale. Yeah, honestly, I mean, uh, we've we've gone through dev uh, several different changes and, and generations, if you will, just in Gears 5 alone when it comes mm -hmm. to professional players. Uh, we've lost some legends, uh, but I'm sure we're going to gain some future legends, right? And uh, it is in Split 2 where they're going to prove themselves and really make it happen. Split 1 was just to start, just a taste of what some of these pros can bring and even some of the new faces. I'm sure we'll be seeing them return. Uh, you know, Chavi's one of those. Maybe he'll have a better chance today. Let me not get too ahead of myself, but regardless, let's talk about the format to give everybody confidence up of what Gears Pro League is all about. It's a single round robin. That means each team will play each other once. So you're not going to be able to get away from a certain team, right? You're going to have to run through them. You're going to have to play them. You're going to see how you're going to stack against them. Best of five series throughout the entire time, right? So it's going to be control, execution, escalation, then control and execution. Notice escalation's only played once, so you better be good at that, but also just as good on control and execution because you're going to have two times to make, or two to, at least two chances to play those throughout the best of five. The top Top eight teams ended up qualifying for Split 3 Pro League. The bottom teams will then play in Split 2 Relegation Tournament. So that means they're going to have to fight once again for their Pro League spot once again. Now, of course, let's get into the meat and potatoes of things, Jacob. We had a ton of changes. We talked about that. We have some new faces. Purified being one of them the newest time, or at least the first time, to my knowledge, they've been in the Gears Pro League. Uh, but all these rosters, you know, some of these... Um, some of these, uh, at least the logos, look familiar. Some of these teams are familiar, but the rosters yeah. are all different. Can I, can I say one thing? Welcome to the Pro League, to Purify. And I, and I love that logo. Give me a dad hat with that logo on it. Being PR is my name. I'll support that all season long. I'll throw that out there. I will support that all season long. Okay. And they have a phenomenal roster as well to kind of line them up, to back them up. Fury One is a challenger team that we've seen like rise to the occasion. Fire and Ice, we've seen them take Storm and really find themselves throughout that right. major and better late than never. But a lot of these teams, they're already household names that are making some roster changes. Now they have to back up those roster changes. Yeah, Purified, a talented roster. X Elevate, you know, they uh, were a great team during Split One and they could could be even better. That's going to be Adverse, Gary, Cardia, right? The core three, but joined alongside that of Toady from the X Noble roster. Super excited to see how he's going to be introduced into the roster. We knew him to be the IGL for Noble. Will he be the IGL for Purified? Well, we'll definitely find out. KCP picking up Brawny this time around. It's going to have some big shoes to fill. Obviously, Precision, it, you can't really replace the guy, but Brawny, this is his best chance to be a champion, in my opinion, right? This is the best possible roster he could have joined so if he's ever going to be a champion this would be it and uh he's already had some good placements right third place during one of the majors that that was with the vanquish roster actually filling in for a player that was dropped out so third place we'll see if he could do better but uh if he can't make it happen this time i don't know if he'll ever be able to make it happen i know that's a bold Ooh. statement but i'm just calling it out there i believe in Bronny though he's a great player Again, though, not looking to uh, replace precision. You can't, but at least he can, uh, you know, fill some shoes. I think he's going to be excellent for this roster. Jacob, were there any roster changes that, you know, made you really excited whenever you heard about it? 
Yeah, there's there's one. I, I love this. That man yeah, has dyslexic. really taken form to take over uh, not only Gears Esports, but take over games as a single player unit. That addition to E United, I, I think is almost Latin America's best chance. I'm going to say it is Latin America's best chance. Everybody <laughs> on that team is Hispanic. They're of Latin American origin. So guess what, E United? You are now a Latin American roster. I'm going to go ahead and call it. That's that, That's our best chance. At winning that championship, and so I you think have that is one, one of the best and now they're changes. all Latin American. All of a sudden, is that is that how that? Uh, Colin would disagree. One from Latin America. Colin would disagree. But, but they're all they're all Spanish. <laughs> they're all Latin American origin. Deep down, we'll let the players decide. Let the, okay. let the players decide to see who we'll, they're winning it We'll for. find out if they win and they send out that tweet. We'll, we'll find out what they really are. Are they in a Latin America? Well, I'm sure Latin America wants them to represent them. Dyslexic, a guy that I've been a huge fan of for quite some time. Love seeing his uh, his journey throughout Gears 5, and this is an excellent roster. I'm super pumped up. Mm -hmm. We actually seen him scrimming you know, from time to time with EU, uh, you know, or at least filling in. And I don't know. I think this is going to be a, a great opportunity for him overall. But uh, enough about the pro teams. We're going to talk about that all night. First, let's give a little bit of love to the chat everybody always wants to know what you're watching win rewards well here they are and these are fresh they're called ash fall and they are in fact uh animated right so they're super super nice i believe there was a tweet sent out on gears esport if you want to go check that out on twitter at gears esports these guys are fresh. And I know Colin's going to be earning them. Blaze's going to be earning them. Uh, Ace is, is going to be earning them. Uh, Jacob, I don't know if you're going to be earning them, uh, but I'm, I'm sure you will be your nerdy like that. Always, always have the skins. Got to run around with the, with the hottest skins, with the freshest characters. Uh, you, you think I get this haircut just to look good on stream? I got to look good in game too. Like, what? come on. That yourself. doesn't make any sense, but I'll roll with it. If you Wait, hey. look good, feel good, play good. If my character's looking as good as I am, there's no <laughs> way I'm losing. There's no way I'm losing. But yet you still do. And that, and that's what is amazing about which I'm Jacob, I'm sorry. You started this before we went live, okay? You've been throwing the fuego all night. Now all of a sudden you want to act like you know you're don't make whatever. me put on the championship. Don't don't make oh don't my make gosh. me no speaking of wit, no. I'll go worldwide out here. I'll go We're, worldwide out here. We don't even have time to talk about the prediction thing, but I, I, maybe we'll have some time tonight. But we tied. You're not the champion, okay? You're not the champion. We tied. We'll share share the championship, share the gold medal. We got hey, all let's night. Talk go back and forth. We got we got all night. Jacob, we, we got all night, baby. All right, let's talk about our broadcast schedule for tonight because it is going to be action packed. We have Rise going against Team Queso, E United versus Rebel. Now that one, whoo, that's going to be a good one. Inks already in chat. You love to see it. Pioneers and Purified will play against each other, of course. So this is for the broadcast schedule on main. We also have our side station schedule just as action packed, and that is going to be Discipline versus Pittsburgh Knights and Fire and Ice against Fury One. Discipline, uh, Javon Dog and Innovates Gimmo as well as Tatis. Gimmo and Tatis, uh, you know, not as uh, familiar with those two, but Javon Innovate, super excited to see them. And Fury won Jayla Venture A Boot last move. You should be familiar with them. Uh, you know, they played in the last major. They played incredibly well, and they're going to be playing incredibly well tonight. I am sure of it. Maybe we'll have a chance to peek in. But let's talk about our first matchup of the day. Let's get right into it, Jacob. It's going to be Rise versus Team Queso. These two teams are incredibly talented. Team Queso is back. They're representing it or being represented by a talented roster. But first, let's discuss the Rise roster making a big change because one of the legends ended up exiting the scene of course that's icy but in brings in zim once again i love this edition of Enzim, and, and honestly I, I knew he was coming back to the game because i was casting that astro battles finals and it was a vexies and Enzim working well together i think they made it as far as the semi-finals pocketing themselves some money and just banging that rust off of Enzim. so that way when the pro league does come around he is fired up he is ready to go and i look at this roster change very very similar to what detox joined in place of franchise Enzim joining in place of icy and what i think this kind of does is icy has like a mindset that championship mindset and i'm not going to take that away from him but you have so many different years so many different versions of gears right. of war on the brain sometimes you might think gears needs to be played a certain way in some does not care how gears needs to be played he's going to play and take over games and i think that complements every single person on this team very very well they've been in the trenches before and they're ready to climb themselves out of it i do got to ask you in terms of Enzim, though, will he be able to have those pop-off moments like Icy did, right? When Icy was popping off, man, he was absolutely... Look, I already know the answer. I'm just building up a storyline for the chat. Did you I, no, I, I, I'm just building up a storyline, Jacob, please. <laughs> Can no he bring that fuego like Icy? We are worldwide out here this week. 
Enzo's going to hear your storyline. He's going to come hunt you down. That's, that's I hope all he does. I, gotta hey, say. I hope he does. There's been some pros that have used what I've said as as fire, right? Fuel for the fire to you know do better. I'm all, I'm I'm all I'm all for that. Rise needs a championship. I'm backing them up this time around. We'll see if they're going to do well. Let's talk about Team Queso though, right? Team Cheese, they're back. I like this roster quite a bit because Chavi's on it, right? Coming from Fire and Ice, F and I, so close to victory so many times, Jacob, but yet so far away. This time, Chavi playing with crystallized sleeper and problems yeah i like chavi being able to join up with his squad crystallized believe it or not brings a ton of experience and some leadership attributes that these young guys can learn from and sleeper as well he has that support style mindset so if they're able to kind of mold and work together as a unit they can be a dangerous team especially once you get on these maps where sleeper can get the sniper in his hand get the m bar mm. in his hands and really pick apart his teams because that's when you see team queso find the success that they find and Problem's another talented player. Super excited to watch him play. I've had time to, you know, watch him throughout his Gears 5 career as well, and he's going to truly be building a career here. Uh, talented roster, they really are, and this is a big matchup for them to kind of solidify what they can truly bring to the Gears yeah. Pro League for when it comes exactly. to split two. So this is a big matchup to start off. You know, it's never easy to play against, you know, Rise or E United, Rebel, or any of the likes of the, you know, the top dogs, but you got to play against them. It's round robin. We talked about the format earlier. You can't avoid it. Might as well get it out of the way early on especially after that little bit of a break but let's talk about our player to watch we mentioned him earlier let's talk about Enzim a little bit more now you mentioned he's been gone a little bit last time he played in pro league was split three phase two it hasn't been that long but his stats during that phase were phenomenal yeah, I mean, he's only been gone because he's in that hyperbolic time chamber, training, taking a little break, playing some DBZ on the side. But y'all better watch out because he is going to come back. And I'm telling you, he's going to be a force to be reckoned with. He always already done it in similar aspects. Like I said, Astro Battles, the first showing where the rust was still there, getting a money placement against some of these teams, some of these players that have been here that haven't necessarily taken that break. I think he's going to be able to finish where he's left off. And the thing that I think makes this Rise squad so dangerous is even though there is that IGL and Avexis that can kind of lead the team, mm -hmm. I, I think this team is going to follow suit of that wolf pack. They're going to work together as a unit regardless of what it is, and then they're going to figure out the right and wrong play because as soon as you're together, that Lancer damage isn't going to be nothing. Somebody's going to stroll in trying to clean up the kill. They're going to get chunked, and that's when the tables will turn. And I think that favors Rise so much. I think it does. You know, you speak about wolf packing. Well, let's take a look at the maps that we're going to be seeing in this series and see if wolf packing is going to help. Well, Regency, case in point right there. You want to talk about wolf packing. Uh -oh. That's a perfect place to start. Team Queso picks it. A risky pick. Rise, obviously, a little bit different when it comes to the DNA. However, I do think this is going to be a, a pretty uh, decent battle, you know? And then Tomb Execution, one that Rise has a ton of experience on. Regardless of what the roster changes, I guess let's focus on that, right? Because there have been changes on both ends. Do you see anything that stands out for you in the five maps? Uh, I mean, I don't know how blunt, how honest do you do you want, want me to be? How not? Go for it. I, I think this is going to be one of the biggest uphill battles for Team K. So you bet you better have strapped on, trained for the marathon, because that's exactly what it's going to be. The only way Team K. So wins this series in my book is throughout four or five maps. Control on Regency Rise, that core unit already being able to take it over. You bring that over to Tomb, especially with the momentum that's built. That's a 2-0, and then you go to Harbor, a map that they they themselves would have picked in the same scenario this this is straight this is going to be a 3-0 possibly they're going to take that cheese they're wow. going to make pizza they're going to wow. make quesadillas they're going to make wow. ham and cheese sandwiches and uh -huh. they're going to have a feast today or they're going to make Blaze's mac and cheese, okay? Check out that video, right? Because it was absolutely fire. But, uh, hey, you're thinking Team Queso One really doesn't have right a there. chance here. Yeah, not, not, mm, not a chance. It, it, Look, these three, these first three maps are definitely looking good for Rice, you know. But and they only added, you know, one new cog in the machine, so it's not like they're just, you know, totally changing their DNA. So these first three maps, I think, will be uh, quite fine. Again, it's Team Queso. It's it's up to them to truly prove them. Spells. Speaking of which, we've been talking about our everything. Let's talk about our predictions because it seems as if we're definitely backing up one horse in this race. And just to throw it out there, guys, I'm going with Rise, and I think that's a safe pick. Rise is a team. They get Enzo back. They've got chemistry with them already. But either way, though. Insim is a guy that I definitely feel fits this roster's play style very, very well. He's incredibly competent, and his skills back when he was playing during Split 3 Phase 2 were absolutely phenomenal. So I think Insim's going to be a huge compliment to this roster and truly could make Rise a championship team. Jacob, what do you think? 
I mean, I feel like you can already throw that logo there, but I'm just going to give you another reason why I'm going to put Rise as my team to take this series overall and kind of take it handedly. Is It's not a negative aspect, but I think IC was getting bored. He was losing the passion for Gears. They weren't necessarily so. practicing and scrimming like we said. Right. This roster, Vexy says, I don't care what game comes out. I don't care what competitions come out. He is gears to the core. You can see it in Rushies. You can see it in Detox as well. And Inzum coming back to showing he has that same passion. These guys are friends in and out of the game. And I think that is going to be a difference maker, this split for Rise overall. Makes a difference to have friends in and out of the game, right? Uh, makes everything a little bit smoother, right? Uh, case in point, yep. KCP. Let's take a look at chat, though, because chat was called out by Hunter. I'm calling them out. Look, you guys got to do better this time around because last split, <laughs> where were you guys at? Last place is where you're at, okay? Last place is where you're at. Chat, who are you going with? You going Rise, Team Queso? It's got to be Rise, though, and I think that's fair. Look, Team Queso still has a lot to prove. I like this roster. But how much am I going to like them after the series is done? Well, we're going to find out very shortly. We're starting on Regency, and it's kind of the home turf, the home field for that Rise roster. But uh, it's going to be exciting nonetheless. Team Queso picked this for a reason, Jacob, and let's see why. Yep, I, I, I just think right now Team Queso, some of their best bets it, is this initial battle. You have to come out strong. You have to set the tone against a team like Rise because throughout all last split, you can already see it in them. Even when they go down, they have the possibility and the potential to come back against the best of the best. And now you're looking at against a team of uh, like Team Queso who has to earn that respect. They are going to fly at them. They are going to show no respect and they are going to make Team Queso work. So they have to come out of the gate swinging. Hills number one, possibly Hills number two and three as well. And if they don't, they're putting themselves in a hole that I think is going to be hard to climb out of. Well, let's go ahead and get right into it. Rise Team Queso Regency. Hey, chat, predictions. Obviously, you ended up going with Rise here. Do you think it's going to be a 3-0-3-1 close series 3-2? I would love to hear what you have to think because it is a really a great time to be with all of you. I, I missed you guys. And we have time. I have time to praise you even more because we got a little bit of a reset. Would it be Gears without that? No, it wouldn't be, okay? Hey, seriously, <laughs> chat, love that you're here. Love that you're earning the watch and wins with the Ash Fall skins. Beautiful animation behind those and uh hey we all love gears don't we so it's a, it's a great time shout out to blake right? calling out Your there uh, aces today. we got everybody so let's get it going all right rise team k so i think this is a live round jacob yeah this better be a live round because i'm ready for it these <laughs> what guys are, you are ready do? for it you already <laughs> see the strategy though three players outside that front door 1v1 towards the inside that's chavi versus inzum inzum already taking that position but problem taking that position towards the outside inzum goes down early that's gonna be the opening play chavi's there to back him up two player rise are gonna fall the eliminations are creeping in and it looks like team queso came to play wow four down for rise off the rip problems the only player lost for team queso off that initial push fantastic job and the man uh, you know hopefully rise will will definitely step it up after that one chavi super pumped to see him play he got two of those initial kills off the rip he has no depths to his name chavi a guy that definitely performed well with fire and ice but i don't think he ever reached his uh, max potential i'm really hoping problems crystallize and sleeper can bring the best out of him now vex is with the m bar something to think about and it looks as if rise going to be putting into good use great shot onto problems he's not going to drop the rise fighting from the hill meaning while Team K, so they still have spawns, but Chavi's still popping off. Ooh, there, I was about to say, Vexy's back-to-back M-Bar shots taking out problems. The sleeper, Crystallize goes down as well, and this is where the Rise team has to go. Three players spawning behind him. They know one is going to take it out into Vexy's. The angle is there with Rushies towards the light side. The frag grenade's going out, both of them being dished out, and even a team kill is actually no, he's going to take himself out. Just in time, though, to turn around to the remaining members of Team Case, they're trying to brute force their way through the hill. Ensign is there to shut down one. Detox in, and Vexy's with the cross. Two more players will fall and it will be rise the last team standing on the hill but luckily for team queso reflections the hill has not rotated just yet so they're going to be able to spawn up without too much time going out the window yeah it's going to test team queso jacob uh you know we just seen a little bit of a, of a, a, a skirmish if you will chavi did a great job holding his ground as long as he possibly could but unfortunately the rest of his teammates ended up dying off therefore rise was able to secure not only the spawns but also the hill so if team queso can you know take this hill back in a clean fashion that would give me good faith that they're going to be just fine, but I love that Lancer fire, something you brought to the table when we were discussing that Rise roster off the rip, and it is hurting them, and I love that angle from Avexi's Team Queso being put in the blender. 
Already, it seems like that good start for Team K. So is the cushion that they need. I told you, it was that early hill. Getting that early lead because of the potential of Rise to always come back. But now Team K still has to be able to stick to their foundation. What they've been practicing up until this point. Detox catches himself out of position though. Full red getting shut down on one end. Problems is causing just that. Problems on the other end with Crystallize and Chavi. They're able to secure the hill. But the frag grenades to a Vexies. He's going to be the player to watch. What he does on rotation. Because they're going to be able to defensively set up onto this next hill. And use those frag grenades are huge. Off the other side though from Team K. So the player to watch is going to be Crystallize. Yeah, Crystallize player to watch. As you just said, can he hold his ground? Problems picking up rushes. of Vexies, though, through the window is going to get chunked. Two down. Detox also falls. Ends him. Last one standing. Unfortunately, just as one player, he can't do a lot. Team K. So, fantastic job breaking through to establish themselves on the next hill. And this is a tough one to break, depending on how you attack it. And Rise is looking maybe like they're going to be attacking that bottom side. Crystallize will spot out two. He's going to be pushing him up top. He's got to hold this because this is where things start to get tricky. If you lose that top side spawn. Team Queso could find themselves in a bit of trouble, but Crystallize having that in bar and three players pushing from the stairs, this could be a good time for him to make some good shots. So good body. That's going to be one down. A headshot to follow. Two out of the way. Team Queso holding their own. Yeah, I was talking about Sleeper and how dangerous he could be with those precision weapons. Crystallize is... There's nobody to watch out for as well. Better show him the same amount of respect, but... It just seems like Rise, when they're able to slow down and kind of control and work as a team, it works out for them. But when they're forced to move forward, when they're forced with their backs up against the wall, that's when they begin to funnel in. And they're giving up yet another hill. So basically, a big lead for Team K. So two to three possible team fights. New fight now, Crystallize trying to close that gap. Falls, but either way, problem still behind, able to get the pickup. 2v2 up ahead. Avexi's down, second one falls, and Rushy's last alive, and Crystallize with the end bar. No shots, no worries, you still got the hill. Fantastic work overall from Team Queso. I'm really liking what I'm seeing from them, and I love Chavi also catching Rushy's off of the rip as he's trying to rotate through mid. It seems like Team Queso are really on the same page, Jacob, and when they do get into that team fight, Rise are struggling to hold their ground. They really are. Rise looking a bit discombobulated, at least off the start. Yeah, it just looks like they've not woken up from the slumber. On the other hand, Team Queso taking full advantage of that. Rushies goes down by himself. Was just trying to contest that M bar. Trading the ammo around. They have two different M bars to use. Three mm. bullets each. Crystallize goes down, though. That's going to give up that M bar that he gave away the ammo to. Chavi is trying to take down Enzo. They're being forced back little by nice little. Vexies does nice get hacked up. And so does Rush. His problem is invoking fear into his opponent, shutting him down piece by piece. They're trying to sandwich these opponents onto the stairs. One more down to come through. Ooh. And Vexies finally answers back, but he gets overzealous. Greedy for another elimination. He get shut down their angles are there from team k so and they're not faltering they're not slowing down they're just taking every oh, fight man. head on and it's working out for them sleep for a nice shot on some detox problems is having one hell of a game and i expected that from them again i was excited for chavi here and i was also excited for problems i've been seeing problems compete time in and time out during a challenger series of course now being in the pro league he is making the most of it and this team case so i don't know if it's you know the newlywed game if you i don't know if it's because they're new but uh or you know fresh faces, if you will, but I mean, man, they are really, really slaying out and taking it to Rise, who is still trying to find a foothold in this matchup, but one thing that is for certain, Rise is a team, even though they might start off sluggish, it doesn't mean that they're going to stay that way. Problems, just to highlight them even more, 11 kills, only 5 deaths, guys. This man is popping off. Oof. Talking about popping off, Enzum is just struggling. Those stats we were looking at are not the case, or at least not to start it off. His big return, he gets shut down yet again. Sleeper goes down, but the revives are there for Team Queso. Not so much for Rise. Enzum goes down, Rushy goes down as well. A big double kill, problems and Chavi. Detox doing what he can. He was able to distract two players and let that 2v1 go down. They get that spawn point, so they will be back into the action a little bit quicker than their counter part but they have to take advantage of those seconds they have to start this fight now if they let their teammates get the reinforcements it's not going to look pretty 
All right, big fight, though. No one's got it. It's still contested. Who's going to be able to get their hands on it? Problems pushes up. Takes down one. Still, though, Rise. They've got plenty of members in. And Crystal. Oh, you got another one. Chavi is also here. It's a 1v1. Detox throws the meat shield away. Collapses it on Chavi. He's down Rise. They've got the 25 seconds. Meanwhile, though, Team K, so they're not going to waste this opportunity. They will challenge for the last 20 or so seconds. They understand, even though it's scrap time, they had the close spawns, and they want that time to uh, elevate them, you know, even further to 300. I mean, it's too safe. Two, 218 now to 69. Rise really still struggling, which is surprising. You look back on the performances whenever it came down the Regency in the past. They were once considered the kings here, but now it seems as if maybe Team Queso is looking to take that throne. I understand, though, it's a bit early to say that, but they are just slaying out and playing so well. Now, if Rise does come back here, though, that would really show me that Team Queso isn't yeah, mentally prepared to really mentally end it and rise. They're going to get some valuable points. Yeah, I feel like at this point, this is Team Queso's map number one to lose because they can just keep going, going, and going. And they have a massive lead here. As long as they get in and contest some of these hills, even if they're not winning the battles, that'll put themselves in a good spot. But it does look like they're going to play that team game. Two players already positioned towards the top. Chavi coming off of respawn to back him up. And there's going to be sleep for the solo player in towards the middle to distract both Insum and Avexis. Insum has to hold his own. He has to let Avexis go off with that M bar. First one not going to be able to connect. Sec one is going to connect, but he's getting Lantern back. He's getting put to down down by Chavi. They push through. They break down two players there, but they're separated. Two separate 1v1s. They're trying to cross for each other to continue the team game going. Team Queso gets the close spawn. Let's see how they utilize it, though. Crystallize also in the hill. He's looking to challenge that of Rushies. Rushies, though, holding his ground. Meanwhile, Team Queso continues to push up. Rushies will take down one. Rushies might get a second. No chunked as it was problems. It was picked back up by Chavi. Inzil down of Vexies now fighting tooth and nail to get his teammate uh, teammate back in and if he can't get the revive but at least gets one goes back for the second but even so those spawns are hurting Rise because now you got Crystallize still on the outside Sleeper's looking to sprint up himself but it looks like Rise has fought hard enough to get at least a scrap time for the 15 seconds and they're also going to get that in bar because of Vexies the only one up top we're going back to the start where Team Queso was able to win that dominant fight get four members out of the way from Rise one once we started Regency. Oh, they got snuck. Rushies was trying to land for that player. He got snuck. Now Detox is feeling the pressure, but he rises to the occasion, taking out one. That's going to be the opening that they need. Unable to connect with the M-Bar shots, though, but at least if Vexies is keeping their heads down, but not enough. Inzum goes in by himself. He gets taken down. Detox wins a 1v1 against Chavi, but Rushy puts himself in a 3v1. Luckily for him, he gets a trade on one end. Detox helps him on the other. The down is there. Everybody's sprinting forward, and Problems gets two! Problems! Wow. gets two, and he's wow. pushing forward for three. He gets downed out, though. Finally, he's taken out, and Rise are doing what they need to. They got the last 50 points almost uncontested. Vexy sends an Inbar shot flying. That was his last one. Now it's just Nasher from this point trying to get out of the way. Bumps into Inzim, who now has to join Rushies to fight hard for the hill. But you see the kill feed lighting up red. That's because of problems and crystallized. But don't forget about a Vexy's from Rise. He doubles back, takes down a couple himself, and at least problems having a lot of problems, who is now dead and gone. And that's going to be Rise securing Roses, at least for the time being. Now they do have to focus on spawns up ahead. Team Queso already fighting for it. Yeah, Rush, he's just breaking free by himself. But look what he's doing right now. He's drawing everybody down. Deep Dog's playing that sneaky role, getting the spawn towards the backside. The only thing is there's 30 seconds left. So Team Queso could definitely put themselves around the 250-plus point mark. Everybody else is getting lanterned in the back. They just need to be able to survive. It's going to be up to Insum and his teammate here in this tough spot. Chavi over the top. Crystallize gets taken out. Up base into the fight. Avexis gets torn out. But Insum is there. Oh! Right? And he gets two. He gets two oh, yeah. problems in the third one down thanks to rushies but crystallize is trying to beat him to the punch uh -oh. they have a decent respawn for team yep. queso so they have multiple opportunities here to punch through you know what i'm saying uh oh because of team queso if they lose this retake now they got it the last time if you remember correctly and they did it with ease but if they fell this time ladies and gentlemen i'm thinking rise might be coming back with a vengeance here on regency still not over with just yet but it's about to be you got chavi down and out he's finished off crystallized full red just trying to utilize any cover he possibly can but he can't do it and rise will get just about a fresh hill you got a couple of stragglers from team queso looking to push up i'm looking at sleeper he'll wait pop the brakes and allow his teammates to join in so they can wolf pack in but if rise can shut this down once again i think rise is back in the fight 
Yeah, they gotta be they gotta be okay with giving it up to try to contest a little bit. Lancering just a little bit too long. Rusty's almost gets taken out. Teammates are there though. And bar fire goes over the shoulder. What? Connects with Sleeper and lands another Ryan's shot. Back. They're back in it. They're back in it. That's it. Jacob, they're back in it. They can take this score. We got a tie. Well, okay, not a tie game. It's about to be. But it's, it's about gonna be, to be damn close. Man, it's gonna be damn close. Rise at this point went from just looking absolutely like they were on vacation, hanging out in Cancun with you, Jacob, and now they're looking like they never missed a beat. They're coming back, and that's the thing about Rise that makes them scary. We all know and love this right about Rise because they're a roster that is tough to put in the grave. When they get in their mind that they're going to be coming back, they start to come back. But hold up, did I get too carried away? Look at problems from the flank, picking up two. Rush is now by himself, and it looks like Team K, so they're going to get the last remaining 20 or so seconds. Meanwhile, Rise, they'll take this opportunity to rotate the next. Score number six, they accidentally team killed in that fight and got problem a great spawn to try to go ahead and break through the defense. If they act quick, they will have the numbers advantage on that hill as well. It just depends. Do they have the information? They obviously see a, a Bexy spotted out towards the middle. Another one towards the backside. They got the numbers that they wanted. They get the call. Chavi goes. Nice back A with a stun enemy. They get the cross on the other side. That's two players rise taken down. Rushy's doing what he can. Great flank from a Bexy. So now it's barely down to a 2v2. And look how quick Rise tries to reunite. They go for the spawn towards the top side. But Chavi spawned just in the nick of time. And they continue to get that top side spawn for Team Queso. And that's where they know they have to take out these two enemies before they advance forward. They do just that, and now they have the full setup. This is looking bleak for eyes. It's looking bleak. I thought it was looking good. I was feeling it in my bones. I really was. I was trying to pull a Blaze Vibe Master <laughs> there, but it looks like Team K, so they said, hey, stop getting carried away, all right? Taylor, you know you get carried away too much. We got this locked up, and it looks like they are, in fact, going to lock it up. 290 and counting rise. One more attempt to get a touch here, but even so, they're going to have to fight for every inch of the map, even if they get this time on the hill, because they're just narrowly away from a loss and ladies and gentlemen that's going to be at 300 to 193 team queso takes map number one yeah that is a big wake up call but it goes to show roster mania was definitely a wild ride I, I would say the roster mania part is over with but that ride is definitely not team queso coming out on top it goes guy. to show this might be the revolution we were looking for Revolution reflections, either way you put it. Problems on top looking absolutely solid. MVP for a reason. 24 17 with nine assists. He really could not do a lot of things wrong in that matchup. And it seemed like every time I was looking at him, he was making some heroic, excellent plays as a whole. That's a big win. And, you know, we question off the rip. Picking Regency against Rise, that uh, you know could have been a blunder, at least we thought, given the historical data of Rise playing on Regency. But Team Queso picked it for a reason. They were on point, for, literally, from the start to the finish. I couldn't really find a lot of things going wrong for them. Uh, their retakes were crispy. Their rotations were on point. They were locking in spawns. Even when they did lose spawns or they did lose a team fight, their refresh was fantastic. They were already back into the fight, and they were winning. Yeah. And, and the one player out of that whole roster I did not mention, ironically enough, was the biggest problem for that rise. And it was Problem himself just breaking mm. through the defense, just, getting yeah. multi-kills. And he was even getting multi-downs, big flanks towards the very, I think, second to last hill there, which really turned the tide and crushed the momentum that rise was building. And, and you, when you have some up-and-comers like that, those are the players you want on your roster for the long haul. Taking a look at the replays, a lot of great moments, it really was. I think more so, though, obviously for problems, as we said, Chavi had great moments himself. Sleeper and Crystallize were definitely in the conversation, but, uh, you know, problems, 21,000 damage done as well. And uh, not to mention, too, he had eight caps, two breaks. He was, you know, instrumental in those big plays when it came down to locking the hills. His M-bar shots were crispy as, as, as can be, you know, and that's going to provide a ton of value on Regency, but also on other... Uh, on other maps as well when the M-Bar is in play. Who knows, even his Torque Bow shot could be great. But, you know, let's let's take a let's take a look more and, and kind of dive deeper into Rise. You know, you mentioned Insom. Insom, obviously not having the star-studded game, uh, star-studded return. Only 10k damage, uh, definitely the lowest on the roster. Rushies was just above him at 14k. He had Detox and Avexies with 20 and 21k damage done, respectively. Um, uh, you know, glaring issues for Rise. What, what do you think they were? Uh, uh, Insom. I'm not, I, I don't normally put it on one player, but I think there was a heck of a ton of rust on the Enzum early on in the game. I saw him with about 
2400 damage he ended total with 10k which wasn't too far behind the rest of his team when things were said and done but when you're going through those struggles and one of your player is in not putting out the damage and, and stats are only a fraction of the story so even though i'm pointing it out on the end zone, but uh, sure. you got to imagine if Inzim was playing to par from the stats that we saw to kind of lead into this series from the last time we saw him a couple splits ago uh, rise would have definitely taken it but he's playing a shadow of himself something i didn't necessarily expect to see but when the lights are on and no one's home what do you expect that's true. Jay, Jay Strong in chat. Shout out to you. Love seeing you in the chat uh, saying now I see why this man's name is Problems. I do too. You know, hey, like I said, I've, I've been a big fan of him. I really have. But uh, hey, that's only one map. You got to keep the energy going. Stamina is one thing Blaze brought to the conversation when we introduced, you know, the three different game modes in the best of five. So, uh, you know, transitioning from just escalation only in a best of three. You got to keep that stamina and keep that energy going. So Problems pop off map number one. Can he continue to pop off as this series potentially goes the distance i don't expect rise uh, despite that lackluster performance in map number one to carry over in the future maps we're moving into tomb execution now we mentioned enzim a lot so you know i hate to just focus solely on him but i have to because when you think about tomb you think about that midline battle that has now become popular right and normally mm -hmm. tomb was you know individual lanes i would have a lot more issues with enzim if he's not playing that well to be in his own lane but you know now he's going to be joining his boys in the pop-off section in mid on tomb do you think this might be a different story because rise you know they had the struggles on tomb but they've now become a fantastic team on tomb uh, or at least they were when icy was on the roster i think this is where enzym becomes depending on the position first off let me say that so i can be throwing this all out the window depending on the spot that he plays but this is where the pure definition of a double-edged sword could come in he could be that player that can take over the game that we've seen him in the sure. past or he can continue to play the shell of himself that we've seen in map number one and be a huge problem for his own team without the help of problem on Team Queso. Okay, interesting. Be, uh, and just, and again, we don't know the positioning. You know, we, we don't know the positioning, and, and that, that's one of the exactly. things. Uh, Ensem is front spawn at the moment, so take that into account, Jacob. Whew. Just, just don't go up top. Just, just don't just go don't towards go that sniper. Play towards the middle. That other top sniper control is just too much. If you get taken down, you open up the opportunity for crosses, flanks, getting surrounded, getting just getting snuffed out at the end of the day. So you know, Enzum, Enzum definitely has his work cut out for him if you're playing up top. He does. And, and also, too, if you think about Icy, Icy was always renowned for getting those quick picks on the weapons. If he if he decided to do that, he can also pop off. And we, we kind of brought that to a discussion. And Enzim is a guy that can definitely pop off. You've been Stop saying, faith. you know, maybe, maybe he's... Though. You know, I, I, I do too. The, the reality is we're coming back from break, you know, and I'm not giving any excuses, but I think for every team, for every, uh, you know, pro player, it, it's it, this break was a little bit different. You know, normally we have emergence days, you know, sprinkled out or something like that. We didn't have anything going on. There was no tournaments taking place aside from, you know, maybe one or here or one there and one here. So it, it really was on the players and the teams to scrim, to continue to practice, to continue to hone in their skills. And I think that uh, can be set for Enzim, who, again, was copying back into the saddle, coming back into you know the gears pro league he definitely should have been taking this break as more of i need to grind i need to be at that level that rises at because rise has always been a contender and a team that we consider to you know always be in the discussion of being a championship roster so uh pressure could definitely be mounting up the end zone but it is map number two. Again, Rise is a team that you can't take lightly, even if they do, uh, you know, go on a bit of a losing streak in terms of the map. So problems fighting for Sniper. He was the guy who popped up map one. We see if he can do it here again. Ends him playing towards that tree. Great shot towards it. You see a Vexies and Rushy picking up that first blood. Ends him finally taking out Sleeper. It's going to be everybody down for Team Queso. Not too much of a noise making round, but sometimes you just got to build onto that foundation. You don't always have to build the hype and make the noise in order to win these rounds. I think Raj just pointed that out perfectly. I think they did, and uh, Rise, again, a confident roster when it comes to execution, but also confident on tombs. So now it's up to Team Queso to take that map number one and, uh, you know, divulge a new strategy. How are they going to battle against uh, what Rise is bringing to the table? They did kind of meet them head on. Team Queso, they'll kind of pump the brakes a little bit, whereas Enzim, no pumping of the brakes. He goes immediately forward, gets it down, and his teammate of X, he's looking to get the finish, but unfortunately, Rise finds themselves in a bit of a trouble spot. Rushy's last alive, takes down one but it's not going to be enough. Enzim getting that first down, but Avexi's unable to get the cleanup. Yep, back and forth, back and forth between these two teams. 
that's what we've seen throughout the middle portion. What, what map number one? When Surprise was finally gathering themselves, the problem. That's gonna be somebody they gotta deal with. <laughs> somebody they gotta deal with early on and, and figure out a way to, to divulge a strategy for that. And you see, it's Detox playing towards that sniper and Enzo is going back in the mark. All right, one to one. Great response from Team K. So more so uh, piggybacking off of uh, a little bit of Rise mistake. Chavi, the big down onto Enzim. That's the front spawn, right? So he's going to be pushing out extremely hard. Crystallize. He's going to get chunked, but doesn't matter. Detox lasts alive, but not for long. He's finished off Team K. So two back to back rounds. Enzim first blooded, and he's the guy who at least made an impact not only in round one, but also round two. Despite Rise losing that again, uh, you know, just to bring it to the table, he got those first down. And he also got that first blood from round one. So let's see if Enzim can step it up, but also the rest of the Rise roster. Uh, Team Queso feeling very confident and comfortable so far. Yeah, I, I almost want to see Rise slow this down because you can see it through the regular split how fast Doom was during the major. They went back to that torque bow strategy to try to slow things down and force their opponents to make a mistake. If they lose this round as well as Detox gets first blooded, Enzim getting caught in the middle. They're trying to make something happen here on the problems. And he goes, he tries to even it up. Bouncing nice. around nice. Enzim putting in work right now. Quick revive onto a Vexies. 3v2. Rusty's is trying to lance your player in the back, not letting anybody get comfortable. Chavi pushing oh. in. He's able to land a good shot. Oh, to Enzo, but misses the kill blow. Crystallized by himself as Ryan man. tied up at two apiece. Chavi, you gotta hit those shots, man. If you're gonna push in like that confidently, you gotta make sure you hit that final blow because it went from a 2v1. It could have been a 1v1. Granted, Crystallize did die in that mid fight, but I think Crystallize might have played that a bit differently if Chavi popped off here in the initial, but Enzim getting that first kill well done from him. Chavi just about made a heroic play. Notice he wasn't weak there, but I actually, excuse me, he did get flanked, so he would have been dead there regardless, so even if Chavi would have hit that shot, but still, you gotta hit those shots. Uh, two to two, we're all tied up here in Detox, opposite of problems. Woo. First blood. Enzim getting angled out in the middle, though. Damage is gonna be there as Detox cleans up another one. Massive advantage in the favor of Rise as Crystallize left by himself. Back-to-back -back rounds. And this is where you're kind of right. When it comes to execution, I think that kind of alleviates the pressure from uh, Enzim coming back into some of these rounds. And I think that's where you're going to see Enzim kind of take flight. If Rise wins this one, they win it off momentum, allow Enzim to get comfortable. I think Harbor is going to be a little bit scary. But if Team Case are able to keep shutting him down, keep him from gaining any traction, I think that's going to be a good goal. X, he's playing really well. Six kills to his name, only two deaths, 5,500 damage done. So we put, uh, put a lot of focus on Enzim, obviously, being a new addition. But Avexi's uh, being that standout player who, you know, he loves Rise. You know, he's been with Rise forever, it seems. And uh, he wants to bring the first championship. He's incredibly passionate, not only about this roster, not only about his organization of Rise, but also about Gears Esports. And it really is showing in this matchup. But unfortunately, Enzim last alive, as it looks like to, uh, Rise was constantly on the backpedal. Team Queso were getting downs non-stop of Vexies was trying to get the pickups but unfortunately that only went so far because Team Queso even when they uh, saw the pickup right in front of them they were immediately putting down whoever was getting uh, revived because hey the Lancer fire was there and Rise like I said was constantly backing up and Team Queso they weren't backing down excellent round and it looks like uh, Team Queso back in the saddle once again we're tied up three to three and now I think Rise definitely has just as much to prove in this matchup as Team Queso does who's Actually surprising, and you gotta give them all the props in the world. Detox this time around, though, going straight in, taking control of that middle portion, putting that damage on the problem. That allows him to cross onto Chavi, and you see everybody scrambling around. They're not gonna get that revive in time, and he's keep separated, though. Problems finds elimination onto Inzum. He gets downed out. They're trying to wolf back together to get the revive, but it's not going to be enough. The players arrive there, finish off yet another elimination. They're sticking together on that same angle to get the revive. Crystallized falls slowly after Sleeper will meet his demise and rise will stay one step ahead of Team Queso. That's all they need to do. One step ahead. It doesn't matter if this is a close series, right? The only thing that matters is getting that W to start off your Pro League uh, season or uh, Pro League split two anyways. And Rise, a team that is uh, looking to go back to back when it comes to first place. We'll see if they can do so. Detox on your screen. We'll see what he's going to be up to off the rip. Five kills, 5,700 damage done. He does have a first blood, so he's also going to be that guy opposite of Problems. And that first blood was a couple of rounds ago where Problems was trying to wrap around the edge and maybe sneak up, but he was unable to do so. Rush is, though, breaking the mold, right? No longer that 4v4 battle in mid. He chooses to go for the Torque Bow. Let's see if he gets value from it. Yeah, I like them switching it up. 
throwing a, a wrench into the mix before they're losing the rounds. They're wanting to keep things fresh and possibly toss something out there. Almost connected with that torque, but Rush, he's definitely going through it. He has to watch the other angle, and that's why Vex is there, but Vexis gets crossed out. This is major opportunity for Team Queso as Crystallize gets one, gets overzealous. He gets taken down. Vexis missed rolls. He missed rolls forward, but he actually saves Whoa, him. Whoa! Did he not? Play. He Yo, shuts down no, too, no. but he hops over no. and death. Oh no, it cannot be. The sniper shot connects. Problem continues to push down and be the driving force for Team Queso. All and detox. down answered back detox. from Detox and he does it. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. I'm ready for this one. I'm ready for this split. What what a round that was. That was a roller coaster ride. It was like, you know, Vex, he's making he's making a mistake. Now all of a sudden he's turning that miss roll into a great play, back into a mismantle to a chunk, and then detox. He is uh, obviously making uh making it happen, right? Getting that cleanup on the final two players, getting the downs and that, that really was a roller coaster of a round. I didn't know which way it was going to go after a certain point, but either way for Rise, they're happy Detox made that final clutch play, and now it's 5-3, to three, one round away from being tied up in the series, 1-1, one to one. and Detox already first blood. Chavi down, Sleeper trying to fight tooth and nail, crystallized by himself, and I think this checkout, or excuse me, I think this tomb execution is going to end in a way of 6-3. to three. Crystallized, he's got to pull off some heroics. Is he going to be able to do it? Oh, it seems like Rise are tightening that bias grip. Ladies and gentlemen, that's going to be it. No beatdowns, all business. Six to three. And like I said, that's going to tie up the series. One to one rise back in the saddle. They're not done just yet. Don't get too carried away. in Vexies. Star-studded player, MVP, 11 kills, 12k damage done. He started strong, he ended strong, and that's what you expect from a Vexies. Either way, for Rise, they tied up one-to-one. -one. They're moving into their favorite, favorite escalation map. It's going to be Harbor. Coming up next, you don't want to miss it. And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Gears Pro League split number two. We're tied up one-to-one -one between Rise and Team Queso. Hey, this has been a battle, Jake, and I'm loving every bit of it. So Rise cleaning up their act. It seems winning on Tomb 6-3, to three, but albeit maybe a couple of uh, shaky moments, but it made it exciting nonetheless. Did you say I'm not the champ? Did no. you try? Did you when try to say, I, I, <laughs> when, I'm when saying, I say that? I'm just saying. I'm I'm watching you reflections. I'm watching you just like I'm watching this rise roster man. I, that's what I'm saying. Inzum, his debut, his return. I'm sure it's not going as well as he planned it to be, but he is doing just enough to keep Rise in the game right here. And I think as soon as he's able to catch fire, get into his old ways, Rise will be a dangerous squad. And I think it's almost a blessing in disguise that they kind of drew Team K. So day number one, first uh, game of the split, because now you got to imagine how that sets the tone for the rest of the split and the season if you're going against one of these elite rosters and it's a complete thrashing. Make no mistake about it, though, Avexis was a large reason why this map went 6-3 to three in terms of Rise. And you know what? I'm okay with that. I'm okay with Avexis stepping up in the way that he did. You know, oftentimes, if a team is struggling, a.k.a. on Regency Control, speaking in regards to Rise losing at 300-193, that's not very Rise-esque, right? They don't really lose like that. So... Um, you know, you do see certain players step it up, and I think if any player is going to do so, I expect the Vexies to do so, and he did exactly that. And now they can breathe a, a little bit easier. They're moving into Escalation. They're going on their favorite map, which is Harbor. I'm actually shocked that that map got through because, you know, when you are when you talk about Escalation, right, you only have three maps. You got Training Grounds, Vascar, and you have Harbor. Harbor is the map that you don't want to play Rise on, right? That That's kind of a given, and that's kind of a known. So I'm curious why Team Queso was okay with playing on this map, knowing how good Rice typically is on Harbor. Yeah, honestly, the, the only thing I can really see, and much respect to the squad as well for this kind of reasoning in my head, is, is they don't care. They absolutely do not care who they play on what map because in order to be the best, you got to beat the best. And if you're feeling confident on a map, you have to ride. You have to lean into that confidence. And honestly, I, I think it's working out for them. They did yep. lose map number two, but some of those rounds problem was causing distractions. This team is still working well together. And as long as they can shrug their shoulders off, like Jay-Z, I think they'll be okay. Like Jay-Z, you know, one quote from him too that I like is, uh, you can't run from the pain, you gotta run towards it, okay? And problems. 
problems is that guy that Ryze has to run forward to because he's given some problems here and there. This is going to be interesting, though, and I do think Team Case, I'm going to give them some credit. Love seeing their Wolfpacking and teamwork on Regency. If they can, uh, you know, make uh, an example of that from Regency onto Harbor, I think they'll be just fine. This roster's looking serious, and even that execution, they were looking serious from time to time, and I think this winch fight could actually go very well for Team Case, so especially with problems leading the way. Trying to see where's Enzim. Okay, Enzim's in the 1v1 spot. I, I like that as well. Down low. Big chaotic fight right Scrap. before our very eyes. Yep, just scrapping, coming out on top. Uh -oh. It's gonna be right, though. <laughs> he just misrolls in their lap, and this is where Enzim knows. Get into that hill. The rest of the team's gonna go for that triple cap domination. So Chavi, it does look like he's just trying to backtrack, but he needs to go forward and figure out a way to buy time. Otherwise, his team are just running into Lancers. The Vexies gets distracted for a quick second. Luckily, it doesn't fall to them too much. He's there to fire the shots back. Rushies goes down. Detox is going to fall as well. It's all up to Avexis to get the cap, but uh -oh. he gets taken down. Team Queso, so far, living to fight another day. Man, living, but will they be thriving? Well, we'll find out shortly. Rise, they've got a considerable lead. They've got two hills to their name, and Enzim is still chilling, watching over B, but he's going to have some company very soon in the form of Chavi and Crystallize, which will put him in a 1v2, but he does have some help with Rushies in the backside, plus Detox has to cross. Actually, Rise putting uh, pretty much all four members to focus on B, you can really see how hard and, and really how much effort they're putting to keep this neutral hill, but unfortunately no matter how much effort they're putting forward, Team Case is still finding a way. Plus, look at the problem. Sleeper on the flank. Rise could be in a very troublesome so uh, spot very shortly. Ah, uh, nah, but Detox beat him to the punch. Gets those two eliminations, which leaves Sleeper by himself. Sleeper now has a decision to make here. Do you go ahead and retreat back towards the middle, or do you try to be a distraction on the side, forcing multiple members to deal with you, but instead, he chooses the first one. He's playing the safer game right now, trying to wait for his own reinforcements to come through, but he's being pressed. He's being pushed. He's being taken down by a Vexies, and that man advantage is going to go ahead and put them at even a bigger cushion, more so than the scoreline here, is they're going to be able to defend that neutral as well as push forward for triple cap domination if they want. Yeah, Only if well, they, they want. have to. They have to. Team Queso oh, no, is a team don't. where, you know, they have to go for the triple cap domination, and like you said, rise if they want. They don't have to, but I think they know we you know, kind of need to in this moment. There's three down. There's no reason not to apply the pressure and continue to put Team Queso in an uncomfortable spot. Sleeper drops, and Rise will get that domination. Team Queso probably not going to get a touch here, and honestly, even if they did, it doesn't matter because they would get a 250 regardless, but now domination ends up coming through, and Rise never let go of control, and I like the fact that they did put as much manpower as possible on that neutral to help out Enzim. Not necessarily to help him out, but just not give it up, but Enzim, zero and four off the rip and that is concerning if i was team k so i'm looking at that i'm saying you know what i think we can win b so whoever's playing in that neutral position down low i want to see him push into Ensem and truly test him here yeah i just seen almost as well as team k so was just not necessarily all on the same page at the same time because you can kind of see it i, I do believe it might have been problems. Can correct me if I was wrong, but he was on the boat. It's actually Sleeper, so I was wrong. He was on that winch, being able to cross down. Three players of his team were there into the fight, but they pushed forward while simultaneously trying to go for that flank rotation, and it did not work out for them. Deep talk, beat them all to the punch, but neither here nor there. You got to be able to push forward towards that next round as Rushies gets thrown massively early. Oh, no. Team killed by Detox. This initial looking over so yeah. right for Team Queso. Yeah, well, you know, even Rushies, as he was pushing forward, there was a missed flash. And it didn't affect him per se, but it also didn't hit Team Queso when it needed to. It hit just the edge of that cover when it needed to go over. And therefore, that initial was kind of doomed off the start. Team Queso, hey, they're going to take advantage of those mistakes. And you can see already pushing him for the domination. Rise now focused on just getting a touch, just staying alive like Team Queso did the last round. Unfortunately, they're not going to be able to. And that's going to be a quick Team Queso round in 43 seconds. And again, you go back to Rushies. He needed that stun. He needed that flash to hit Team Queso, but it unfortunately landed right in front of him and then followed up with Detox getting the team kill. That initial was doomed from the start. Yeah, I, that early flash on the rushes. I don't know if it was his teammates. I don't know if it was the other team, but that early it was his teammates. flash. Yeah, that, that, that did wonders for him right there. So when you have like four or five flashes getting thrown at you there for rushes, it's going to be hard to survive. And it's going to be hard for your teammates to survive too if they feel like they have to push forward to this rise next time. needs to Maybe think defensively when Rushies goes down, but it's just a tie game, so they have plenty to work with here as the things continue. 
It's going to be retros all around for both teams. And I think this is a strategy when it comes to Harvard that I love. I hate it when that bolt talk goes down to the top half to the 1v1 player. I understand its purpose, but I always think team first. See if Rise will uh, do a little bit better this time around. They're back on the side that they won round one off of. This time, though, it looks like stuns are hitting where they need to, and Problem's going to take advantage. That's a great stun. He needs to take this and push forward. He doesn't, and now Ryze can come back on the attack. But still, though, nobody down, but there it is. Two fall. Detox back in the fight. Avexis now stands up. It's not going to be enough. And now that lead, well, actually, four down. This round is all but over with, pretty much. Team Queso, another great start. And those stuns were picture perfect and allowed Problem's to push forward. Ryze, they didn't have a leg to stand on. They might be able to get back in it with some heroics and brushies, but but there's already one chunk. A second one will follow. And Jacob, this is going to be a, a 2 2 1 lead, right? For Team Kate, though. Oh, and, a, and there's $5 cash too. In. Cash in. Somebody Five better dollars, cash baby. in. Let, let chat know why. Let chat know why. Colin tells these people all the time. If you get a retro charge stab, he'll, he'll pay you. What is the amount? <laughs> I don't know the exact amount, five, but I'll I think I it's five. Five. I, I mean, that's better than anything right there. That's just free money. You guys better cash in to Colin the Crow Clark because it's definitely worth it. It's definitely missed, worth I, it. I, I missed a name, though. I don't know who that was. I want to guess I, Sleeper simply because he's a sports style player. He's not yeah. playing front spawn. Sleeper got himself though. five bucks. I take that all day. Take that all day, okay? Hey, Team Queso up two to one. Well done from them. And that was a great, great start. Again, they're hitting their stuns where they need to. Problems is uh, being aggressive, but also not scared to kind of pull back a little bit when he has the advantage. But it looks like Ryze is going to have their advantage here. And I love that Avexis quickly from the top end collapses down. Now all you need is Enzim to hold in B. But hey, overall, he's going to be able to because Chavi is forced to go ahead and back off and try and uh, potentially get a touch on the C. But a shock is going to be out. And Ryze, they're going to have another quick Round going their way. They're going to tie up the first half two to two, leading into the second half. Just a great, that was great plays by Avex. He's there immediately really knowing those situation. He left the guy down, immediately overextended, grabbing the shock and cementing himself in the hill. He trusted his teammate on that wench to continue to cross down. And he said, regardless of what happens, my teammate's either going to have a 2v1 because he's going to contest the neutral, or he's going to travel all the way back, have to run through the shock to contest me on the home hill. Perfect execution in that round by Ryze. Looking at the stats of Vexies again playing very well, not uh, not letting go uh, from that first, uh, or excuse me, from Tomb, right, where he was uh, definitely influential in getting that victory. No power weapons down, it makes sense. It's tied up 2-2, two two, so a Boltox will have the uh, the shocks as well. This time around, though, we'll be fighting for the neutral instead of it being at B at Dock. We're now going up towards Stern for uh, a bit of a different fight. Well, I say different, but look at Vexies immediately going for the top side once again, and he's gonna have that same angle where he found success in the last round. He'll get Sleefer and ultimately be able to back up and get the neutral. There's still some Team Queso members they have to deal with down low, but I love that. Once again, I love his ability to quickly get onto the backside of Team Queso. Team Queso's got to find a way to address that. Yeah, Enzim was looking promising to try to push that up. A great bold talk to shut him down, but now Chavi a little overzealous by himself. But I can kind of get when your team's back against the wall, you got players pushing up, you, got, you feel like you have to make that move, but... Enzim is now going to put that same pressure. Flank coming through from rushes. His teammates are backing down. They're trying to buy him all the time in the world. Great cross to come through. Everybody playing the situation perfect. That's going to be a big team wipe towards that neutral. Xavi, a fresh off the respawn, unable to touch and rise. Goes up 3-2 to two after winning back-to-back -back rounds here on Escalation Harbor. I'll pass the question to you, Jacob. Of Vexies wreaking havoc two rounds in a row from taking the top side, getting onto the flank. The last victim he took down in that last round was Sleefer. Team K, so how do they address that? Do they maybe send a member up top to, uh, you know, deal with the Vexies off the rip? Or, you know, do they, uh, I don't know. I mean, do they send all members up there just to fight for the neutral and leave Winch alone? Uh, I'm just trying to think real quick, think real quick. Eh, you still got to contest down low. Especially, you know, you know, no offense again, but you know, Enzim isn't having the best showcase matchup. So for some people, they might, they might think that's a little bit an easy matchup to send somebody. Especially if it's Chavi going down low. We've been saying his name split after split most recently coming into this one as well. This is about how much damage he can do. But Detox doing some damage on his own. That's back-to-back -back kills. He takes out problems and crystallize. Sleeper's forced back, but you see Chavi pressing forward. Nobody has that cross to help Enzim, so it's a pure one v one. 
Walker, 1v1, Sleeper down rush. She's taking him down to the ground, letting him bleed out. In the meantime, Rise uh, will be contested on their home hill. That's going to be Chavi pressing into Enzim, and Enzim wins that fight once again. He won it the last round. He wins it this round. Cool, calm, and collected, and the domination looking to click through, and there it is. Crystallized couldn't get a touch in time, and Rise, despite, you know, struggling a little bit when it comes to rounds two and rounds three, seems like they've cleaned it up, and they are selling for a victory here, which will put them up two to one, one map away from uh, winning this series outright in the first series of Gears Pro League. Yeah, I think once these teams are losing that initial, they're finding it hard to survive. They're finding it hard to buy much more time than they're absolutely getting here in the moment. I think those instants going down is going to allow them to buy some time if they lose that initial fight up top towards the winch. They just have to be able to kind of dodge it themselves if they get one chucked at them, like if Enzim's team wins the fight up top, he has to be able to dodge an instant fall back. So we know how aggressive Chavi's going to get. Yeah, he's getting aggressive, but, uh, you know, he only has one kill. So is that aggression really working? You can argue no. He does have a lot of damage with the assists, though, but even so, Enzim knows, hey, I, I, I can push this fight and I can make it happen. Rush, he's once again getting that first butt onto Problem Sleep for now. Caught between a rock and a hard play. He's got a meat shot in front of him. He's getting swarmed up by three members of Rise. Crystallize now doing everything he can. Gets the shot onto a Vex. He will get the pickup of the meat shield, so that's going to finish him off. But regardless, though, Rise still with the two to one advantage, forcing Team Queso to respond. And while well, Rise continues to push over towards D, and I think this is about to be over with. with the 5 2 win for Rise. Enzim looks like he's going to rotate towards the top side of the map. No, he doesn't need to do the defense there, especially with the trip cap domination. Shock is going to be there. Vex, he's got to bounce it back at himself. Enzim there trying to make something happen for Enzim. A double down coming through. That's problems counting both of his teammates. So it wasn't a Vex. He's kind of shocking himself. It was problems doing the best that he can. It almost was a big blunder here, but they got the necessary elimination here. Three players trying to force their way up towards the top side. Vex, he's a little late to rotate, but a perfectly placed Shock is gonna stop them in their tracks. Still though, Rise two to one hill advantage. They've got the point lead and Team Queso need to get the work and quickly pushing up that ramp going to E. Not easy to do. It's a very difficult retake, but it looks like they're gonna wait for Chavi to come off the respawn. Enzim will spot him and they know it's gonna be a three man push. So this is Rise's opportunity to shut down this attempt. And if they do so, well, Team Queso is pretty much dead in the water. But hey, if Team Queso makes it happen, they have a chance, but they're so far behind in the points that this is a uh, literally a must-win retake attempt for the neutral. But it looks like they're going to be put into the blender. They're already weak, and Avexi's up close. But hey, maybe slowly but surely, they do seem to be pushing up. I'm really shocked at this, given oh, the amount yeah. of damage they took up the ramp, but they made it happen. This is why I'm a caster, bro. I can't be doing things like that. I sometimes feel like, oh, man, I can take on these pros, and I see that, maybe... It may, I just want to admit it. How about that? I'll just keep it myself right now. Zinzum's trying to stay alive. He's keeping to himself across the map here. But the more people that worry about him, the more opening chance the rest of the team gets. And that's including this. Detox in a 1v1. Going for the reaction shot. He gets downed out. But he... I'll just say the revive is there actually on the other side. That's Chavi. Rise is turtling on this hill. This is the last chance for Team Queso. And they have a big advantage. 20 seconds, that could be an eternity, oh, wow. especially when Avexis is down. Now Rushies is by himself. You got Enzim off the respawn, but he's got a little ways before he gets to the hill, and that's going to be a break, but this domination needs to happen. Rise trying to do what they do best, right? Send the player up top to E. We've seen them do that so many times when it looks like a team is going to win, even though they shouldn't. You always have that one Rise member who chooses to sneak away, get on the neutral, and ultimately win it by just mere points. But he was shut down. That was Enzo trying to make the attempt. Good round from Team K. So Rise letting that one slip through their fingertips. And... and, and I know Ribs, like, he's going to bring up the stats. I trust that man. Oh, Ribs is doing such a good job tonight, by the way. He's back, baby. You'd love to see it. Tell me of a stat line that doesn't scream initial fight bigger than this. Both the 1v players with only a single elimination down low. All assists from those early flashes. The only bit of cross they're able to do. This, this is all initial. That's put a lot of pressure on. I think that sniper is a great switch up, but we see our lock going down as well. Right. Yeah, that lock going down. Here. That's... That's gonna affect uh it's gonna affect Team Queso. But either way, you don't get that snipe, you're gonna be in a little bit of trouble here in Rise. They placed it for a reason, so or excuse me, Team Queso placed it for a reason. So let's see if they're gonna be able to get it. You would expect them to full send it. Nobody dying though off the rip. Either way, though, Team Queso once again giving up the neutral. Nice shot by Detox. He got that first shot and problems. 
Looked like he was going to try and contest it regardless. The cross over the top here is going to make Enzim's job a lot easier, but he knows not to push forward because that sniper being down there. The split is in two to two to start this game off, and Detox is pushing over. He has the angle on to crystallize. They're funneling in the pressure on multiple members of Team K, so they're beginning to feel it, especially in this big round. Big round indeed. Vex, he's getting the sniper, tries to line up on the problems, but problems uh, is not going to get shot, at least from him. Actually, he'll take down Rushies in the meantime, though. Rice still has a lot of presence. Let's see if they can close this gap. They've done it many times. They just have to do it one more time to win this 5-3. to three. Player 4 is going to be over there. That's going to be end zone. Team Case was trying to break out, go for the neutral, but I think this is all but over with. The less crystallized oh, makes nice a crazy shot. play, but a good shot. Threading the needle. It's a body. We'll take those all day. Every day at Rise will, in fact, close out Harbor Escalation 5-3, to three, and they will take a 2-1 to one lead in the series. Yeah, and this is where I begin to kind of question Team Case so and how deep their strategies go and how, how deep they can actually dig. I know Crystallize and Sleeper trying to bring all this experience to the squad. They surrounded themselves with some young guns, some big slayers, but now who is going to pick them up when they're down? Who right. is going to bring that hype and bring that resurgence to the momentum that we need to see? We've seen it from Rise already. We know a couple players have it in them, both the Vexies and Detox, but that's why I put the biggest question mark on the Team Queso here. I think I think you have to. Uh, you know, I, I will say this though: there is some silver lining. I think Team Queso, for you know the roster being what it is, I do think they're playing incredibly well. You know, make yeah. no mistake about it. We talk about the shortcomings of Enzim. You know, trying to get his legs underneath them, joining back into pro league. You even said maybe being a shell of what he once was. It still is the first Gears Pro League match, right? After Great. a long hiatus, after a long break, made even longer with Enzim taking the break that he did. So I think Rise is still playing fairly well, Team Queso definitely holding their own but despite rise's shortcomings at least in this series and maybe you know a couple of errors off of initials and it flashes maybe some team kills and, and you know the likes of i still think rise is rise you know and they're a team that you have to take seriously so i got good faith that team case are playing as well as they are they're only going to get better i just don't know where their skill ceiling is at so early on in the league at least today in this series i think they're playing phenomenally well i'm truly impressed now we if once we reach the midway point or towards the tell in the pro league i hope they've gotten better because i don't want to see them you know fizzle out early on yeah and, and i think one of the worst things that's going to shut this roster down it isn't necessarily losing right it's not the loss that itself is going to shut this squad down it's when they're playing so well and then they just get stopped in their tracks, just like Rise was able to do here on map number three. You saw Team K, so they were setting the tone, they set the pace, but once that second half came, once Rise was able to win that initial fight towards that middle of the boat, once that Cypher went down low, you can kind of see Team K, so they weren't prepared enough. So once we come into this district control, I think that will lean a little bit more into Team Queso's favor. I wouldn't say overall, because I think Rise can close it out here with three straight games with a score of three to one. But Team Queso not having to worry about the weapon swaps that Escalation brings, not having to worry about the difference in strategies that Execution brings. They can just go ahead and play their game on control, fast, aggressive. They can stick to each other and then play into that all out battlefield war of game number five on execution but it comes out starting off in the same pace that you did in map number one on regency and, I, and one thing that i do want to point out regency was straight up one on team from team queso rise they they just weren't in that there, there was no there was no comp or there was no comparison you know team queso they won that outright uh tomb though obviously team queso loses that and i look at the rounds that they did win you know some of those were won outright but some of them were also won because rise making mistakes and, you know, speaking of Rise making mistakes, you look at the three rounds that Team Queso won on Harbor. They won those because Rise made mistakes. It wasn't because Team Queso was controlling the map. It wasn't because they were having, you know, uh, great initials, if you will, even though they did. But you look at the initials that they did win. One of those was because Rushies was stunned by his own teammate, and then he was also team killed by Detox, which allowed for a 43-second round with Rise ultimately winning, or excuse me, Team Queso winning that in a way of a domination. You look at other rounds they were able to take. Uh, that ramp push, I think that was the second or the th uh, second or, no, that was the third round they were able to win. That ramp push, ends 
Keesum had a, f- a phenomenal cross. I thought Rice should have locked that in. Team Queso had no right retaking that E hill, but ultimately they did. So I think for the most part, Rise, you know, the rounds they won, they won because they were dominantly in control and Team Queso couldn't retake that control. As opposed to Team Queso, the rounds they did win, they won because Rise was making mistakes. So uh, Team Queso, they're capitalizing up mistakes as they should be, but every team can do that. So again, I want to see Team Queso, if they're going to win, I want them to win in a fashion that they did on Regency, where Rise wasn't in the running, uh, but maybe once, where I was like, oh, they might be coming back. But as we move into district control, uh, you know, again, like you mentioned, we're going back into control. This is where Team Queso felt very comfortable. They won Regency, uh, what, 300 to 193. So this series could very well go the distance to a map number five. Team Queso, I want to see if that same energy from Regency translates over here now after taking two map losses. And, and, and I said it to you. I, I said the only way they really win this series is, is through five games, possibly four, but I said it through five games. I saw that checkout being that map, that all-out battlefield. I feel like any team can beat any team on that map. It's just how do you find yourself getting to that map number five? I thought for sure both of these controls would go in favor of Rise, but Team Queso proved me wrong from the get-go. So they can definitely prove me wrong, everybody wrong today, because I think everybody unanimously picked Rise to take this series if they come out swinging in that same tempo. And I think that goes putting two players in towards that nade, maybe one player down low, one player in the middle, figure out a way to get that boom shot, drop shot, or that big power weapon in towards the middle as early as possible for your team but it's not only acquiring it that's the thing because we've seen throughout all last split it's the ineffective use you have to make sure you effectively use those drop shots in these scenarios sure. Yeah, drop shots uh, more than not go to waste, or they're missed, uh, or you die with it uh, on your back, you know. And which again is is kind of a good thing. You don't want to give it to the other team, but you got to use it. And I feel so many players that oftentimes will hold on to it, looking for the perfect play, looking for the correct play, which inherently isn't bad. But if you let it go to waste and you don't use it after you fought tooth and nail for it in that mid fight, well, I mean, really, was it worth it? I don't know. But either way, this is going to be a fun one to see. And I go back to that initial start, map number one. On Regency. Remember, four members died off the rip. Once they clashed, they headbutted. And what's funny about that is Chavi, who was on Fire and Ice, if you remember Fire and Ice on District, would always, no matter who they were playing, win the initial fight over in Cinema pretty dominantly. So I'm curious if they'll carry that same energy here on District like they did on Regency and start things off right for TQ. There, man. I, I feel it. I feel like TQ can really surprise people. I feel like they can force a game number five, but I also think Detox and Avexis, the way they've been playing, especially that we talked at this break, this off season, the off split, they didn't have an off split. I kept trying to tell Detox, bro, let's throw Caster in the mix. I'll put up my money. We can start swinging at a lot of these players. So they're ready to start swinging this season. You already see that three up from both of these teams. Inzum and Crystallize find themselves in the 1v1. All right, problems also there. Detox picking up Sleeper alongside that of Rushies. And it looks like Rise wins a solid initial. Like I said, Team Queso off of map one. They won the initial, knocking down four members of uh, of Rise. But this time, we kind of flipped the script. And so it looks like Insom also has that drop shot too, forcing Team Queso, who might be a little bit rattled off of that loss, to now try and come back to win so they can get the uh, the last remaining points here. And Sleeper is going to be kind of the spearhead, if you will, pushing in a Vexies, though, isn't going to let him get in for free. Free. Make no mistake about it. Plus, you also have to consider the drop shot, which Inzum still has. But I'm curious when he's going to send it flying. It looks like right now. Take down Chavi. He's gone. Now he can push up. Problems also down. Sleeper's going for the pickup. He'll get it, but he's going to lose his life in return. Problems will also die off. And that is two big team fights won from Rise. Rush is here. Has crystallized weak, but trying to play as safe as possible. Back A's to take out his head, but. The onslaught continues. Chavi's there to try to beat him to the punch. Avexis has that shock grenade. He's trying to rotate it from down low, but I don't know if he's going to be there in time. Three players going in. Rushies finally gets downed out. Of Detox trying to be the hero, but he gets zero eliminations for his effort. Three players beginning to disperse outward. Inzum trying to be scary. He goes for the up A. Inzum chokes. So oh, no. This has been the story of the series for him. I hate to put a lot of emphasis on him, but you're right. Even on Harbor, you know, we're showing those stats, Grant, that he had the damage and he was playing, you know, that neutral position so oftentimes if his teammates did lose that initial which happened quite often on harbor obviously you know ensign's going to be in a 1vx situation it's not going to be a solid one for him but even so this entire series despite maybe a couple of pop-off moments on regency 
in maybe a couple of moments on Tomb, Inzim hasn't been playing that well. But I'm going to go back to the tried and true, and I'm just going to give them the benefit of doubt. It's still early on. It's the first match of Pro League, and they're coming off a long hiatus. And like I said, with Inzim, even a longer one because he took that break last uh, competing in uh, Split 3, or Jimmy Season 3, uh, Split 2. But regardless, though, let's see if uh, they're going to be able to uh, recuperate. It looks like Team Queso well in control of the second hill. I'm just sitting down there collecting it. You see Rise, they get that spawn point towards the top side, but Detox needs to stay alive. The drop shot in the hands of Chavi, and look at him, he's going in, rotating all the way around the save point down low. He spots a player in front of him. A second one in towards the mix. Drop shot gonna connect. That's gonna be a double kill overall for the squadron as they get even more score underneath their belt to take the lead away from Rise. Indeed, yeah. Like you said, take the lead. They now have 10 plus. So will continue to go on. Focus now on the next as we do see Rise obviously locking it in. And they're going to have a pretty solid foothold. They just got to get Sleeper and problems out of the Ooh, way, wow. which obviously is very tough to do. Problems holding his ground. But even eventually with the Wolf Pack, Rise will push up, take him out of the way. And Sleeper now uh, by himself. But look at that shot. Perfectly placed. And uh, it's still not certain if Rise is going to have spawn control. But. It looks like they finally do get it. They still got to deal with Crystallize, who's now on the hill. But that was uh, a lot scrappier of a fight than I was expecting. I was trying to be sneaky. He's trying to make sure nobody sees him there. But I think that last pop-up gave away his position. But it doesn't matter. He's rotating around. They're trying to take this 2v1 in towards this juice. So they can have some sort of advantage when their teammates come off of respawn. But problems going down. Stops them in their tracks. But they catch Rushy slipping low side. Rushy gets caught out of position. The rest of the team leave him down because they know they have a 4v3 advantage towards this side of the map. 4 advantage, as you said. Team Queso pushing through. Vexies, though, able to get that first blood, but he's quickly getting peppered up. I thought that was a team kill, but it wasn't. It was actually Chavi who picks up a Vexies and ends him, followed by Crystallize getting detox. Three gone rushies. Now uh, going to just wait for his teammates to push up. You see problems uh, holding his own over in Bandstand, which is where the next hill is going to be. And obviously the shock is going to be just to his right very shortly, which he will not only lose Bandstand, but also the shock. Rise looking to recuperate the deficit they have on the next hill. Bringing it all in right now. Team Queso doing good, like you said. Set up on one, getting ready to disperse outward for the next. Sleeper in a, in a good spot here. Has to be careful not to get pushed. And it looks like they're going to swarm. They're going to try to attack Sleeper, get that man advantage. Detox with the drop shot. So it does look like they're going to put their eggs in towards this next basket, which is going to be the down low neutral. But Problems has that side angle. If he can buy some time, get reinforcements there. And depending on if anybody even knows he's there. Yeah. Well, now oh, they, they do. do. Yeah, I don't like. I don't like that at all, though. I don't like that at all because so nobody's break, getting break able to capitalize down. on that. Do you not like it because you think he just should have immediately pushed? No, yeah, into... no, 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 no. He should have just stayed there, waited right. for his teammates to either make some play because he lancered there. He got a couple of damage, but no one's able to clean up on this. Now with his teammates in position, that lancer is going to be useful as Sleeper gets taken down, but it's going to come at a trade, a miss drop shot from Detox. Talk about a missed opportunity there for a double kill as his teammate gets cleaned up, crystallized. They're trying to push this bandstand. Ooh. They not only push it, but take out Detox. Inzum is going to find himself hard to survive here while trying to maintain a position to save his teammates. They're both being forced back. Avexis pushes in, trying to catch somebody off guard, but he gets slapped down. Sleeper is going to get taken out, but Inzum is going to fall. The overall battle leans in favor of Team Queso. And Team Queso is just a solid control team. Like, they really are. You know, from Regency to here, it, 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 because they're replicating it, if they were to have a lackluster map number two, you know, here on District, I'd be like, okay, well, map number Number one regency maybe they're just great there but no they're just a great control team it seems and you know their slaying power and their ability to wolf pack is fantastic rise is truly truly struggling to keep to keep the pacing you know of them I, I, mind you off of that first hill they've been an excellent job you know slaying them out two times in two distinct team fights but team queso really impressing me today in this series as a whole things do get a bit shaky though his three members will die off here but obviously problems holding down for the next and he's going to have a, a, some company behind him as well is in the front. Problems feeling ever the more confident. It's going to be a 3v3 battle for the next one. Yeah, I feel like right now Rise is just playing too reactionary here. Whether they turtle and push together as four, they need to figure it out. Players just getting downed out without a chance to believe here. As Avexis, he's going to go ahead and get that hill with only four seconds left. Drop shot in the hands of Sleeper as well. Look at the positioning in your minimap. They have absolutely everything that they want as Rushies gets down and taken out. 
crystallized, gets dropped, but only for a few seconds. Chavi's there to save the day. It looks like they're trying to get through that juice, but you see Sleefer right now, he's trying to make them forget about this drop shot for a little bit, so when they push through as a team, it makes more of an impact. Absolutely. And it looks like Rice, they're gonna try and go oh, through this one little chaw. That's a bad drop shot. Either, either way, a Vexies might still die here, full rev, but able to recuperate. You gotta hit those drop shots. It was something you brought up, Jacob, right? Drop shots go to waste more often than not, and what would have been the impact? Well, the drop shot could have got rid of a Vexies, and a Vexies just got first blood as they push through into this team fight. Even so, problems did everything he possibly could, but again, you take down a Vexies, and then you don't lose a teammate shortly after, and that's why drop shots need to be utilized correctly, and unfortunately for Sleeper, he let it go to waste. It's going to be a big come. I'm trying to see how much time, but not too much time actually left on this hill. So this is a good battle for Rise, but it's only, it's only going to give him inches. It's only going to give them inches in the grand scheme of things, so they have to continue to keep these going. Problems holding that shot over the top, just in case he gets overzealous. Sleeper with that shot grenade in hands. They got the positioning down. If they can survive and retreat to reunite as a team, this is going to look good as they continue to keep the numbers in their favor. But Crystallize gets over Ansi by himself. The cross oh, is there, but Insom gets shut no. down. Insom losing. That is big. That's oh, devastating, no. brother. He had the first shot at everything. There was He had the, his opponent's back turned to him. I I go back to Ryan, man. Ryan always says the hardest shot to hit is when they're not looking at you. And I guess that's case in point. But again, for Enza, but the caliber that we expect them to be at missing that shot is truly, truly uncharacteristic. Nice shot by Enza there to kind of answer back. Once again, continues to struggle in this series. What he was playing like, but a big double kill. Got to build that momentum. It's not all in one play, but a back A from problems makes it all happen in one play. Proves me wrong, but Vexy's with the drop shot. 57 seconds left on this hill. That's a massive amount of time for both of these teams at this stage of the game. Massive amount of time, indeed. 182 to 105. Nice drop shot of Vex. He's picking up two. Instantly turns around to focus on Crystallize. He knows he's got player six Detox, who's currently in the hill. And he's also acutely aware of where Team Case is going to be respawning back up. Speaking of which, you're going to have four of them right in front. And player one could be an impact player of problems having that off angle. But for Rise, they've got a solid foothold inside the hill for the last 30 or so seconds. Team Case, so they're going to give it a good attempt. But Detox being the tip of the spear, picking up problems. He step by step. Rushes has two players. He's going to go down, but it's about that time that he's buying. With 24 seconds left onto this, Rise is going to give this one up because they have Inzum rotating towards the top side of the map. Big fight between Inzum and problems here. About to go down, and you can see the reinforcements coming through in your mini-map. In case, so we'll have an advantage here. Problems hops over the cover. He missteps, and, but in, the advantage goes heavily in Inzum's hands as he takes him out. That's going to be a one-man advantage overall. Three players geared up towards this hill. So it doesn't look like they have the position to continue to take out these players, but they have the position in terms of the hill. Said positioning. Hey. Shock also out. Vex sees. Good kill onto him, or at least onto problems, excuse me. Hill about to be up in just two or so seconds. Team Queso trying to get their way into the hill. They can at the moment. And one thing is, though, Problems does take on Rushy, so that's going to be a bit of a different angle. And now, the members of Rise, which specifically speaking of Vexies as well as Enzim inside the hill, are going to be forced into a sandwich, but they do break out by attacking Problems first, double back onto Sleeper. Still a lot of work needed to be done. Enzim falls, and Team Queso will get a break they desperately needed. It got a little bit closer. Remember, they had about an 80 or so point lead that was quickly dwindled down to about 30 or so, so Team Queso, by winning that fight and having Problems able to sandwich the remaining rise members well that free puts drop. them above 200 that closer to sending it to a map five yeah free drop right there they forced problems out they lost the fight towards the top that's where team queso had their numbers so they're able to get that one pretty pretty free pretty easy we talked about the effectiveness last time we seen in the hands of a vexies he did get a double kill shoots that one out it's going to connect with sleeper that's going to leave an open man advantage here as the damage continues to be poured out from both of these teams great defenses chavi gets it down onto one they push forward they continue the downs and they get both of them chavi and crystallize the dynamic duo emerging like i said these young guns are proving themselves with these latin american veterans yeah there was someone in chat said you know this new gen's not playing around i agree with you team queso's looking Looking strong, at least when it comes to control. They weren't even looking that bad when it came to execution. So, with that being map five, and we might be heading that way, Team Queso still has a very real chance to big, uh, in my opinion, uh, you know, make an upset against Rise and win their first uh, Gears Pro League series, right? At least as this roster, 231 to 153. An angle, nice angle from Chavi is going to keep uh, Rushy's head back. 
Either way, Sleeper keeping the hill contested. I think Rai still wins this hill. So uh, for Team Queso, they got to play this accordingly because Rice has a lot of presence. And yeah, Chavi is also down. Rice got a good foothold here. Rice with enough time left on the hill. Just trying to do the math real quick. I think that's, I think that's just enough to kind of get them close. Very close. Not enough to take the lead if they drain it, but it's definitely going to be a close one, and they have to make this decision all simultaneously. Do you contest that next drop shot, or do you try to get it as close as you human possibly can? I think right now, waiting for Team Kiso to make the push, getting that little advantage you can would be the opportune time, but flash over the top. The nerdy flash from Team Kiso is going to get themselves an elimination a down only for a few seconds here, but the pressure is there from Rise. They're trying to clean up and finish off this damage, but Rushies, he gets taken out by himself. Detox is going to fall. That elimination is also going to present themselves an opportunity to get that drop shot I was just talking about. Drop shot sleeper. He's going to be rotating out for it, but he sees a wall of Rise members, so he's got to back up for the time being, but it doesn't put Rise any closer to getting that fresh drop shot. Either way, for Team K, so getting the 27 seconds that was left on the hill was great, and Chavi does get away and eventually uses the drop onto Detox. Make mine. That's a big kill, even though it's only one. Rise was taking that top side to rotate over for the new hill, but all is lost anyways because of that great play from Avex. He's locked in blue and they've got a great foothold on this current hill but if they lose this at any point team queso could be dangerously close to winning map number four sending it to a map five so it's imperative rise holds their ground right here right now yeah two pushes one at the beginning of the hill that's gearing up where you see three players towards the top crystallize towards the bottom and possibly one more after that to at least keep this one contested Three players get flashed out. Great connect with two of those players. The shots are in. The cross is in as well. Etoch trying to hold his ground. Only one down is there. That's going to be cleaned up, but it's going to come out of trade. They lose a Vexies. They lose Detox, but actually the revives are going to be there, so they're only going to lose Inzum on this exchange so far as he can continue to try to get the angle. Players going wide for Rise. Crystallized now stuck by himself. Like I said, two fights, and they secured one. Two fights, secure one, and uh, well, hey, that's going to put them closer to tying things up. The pressure really is mounting for Team Queso. They understand that this series is far from being over with because they still have to win execution if they win this map, but they also understand that, you know, uh, this map's not over with just yet either, is it? Because Rise is so close to tying things up. So I'm curious to see the composure that Team Queso has. They had it on Regency, but they also had about a 150 point leap. Even though Rise was coming back, uh, Team Queso was still very much so in the lead, so it's not that much pressure per se, but now the pressure is going to be really high because we're just nearly tied up. Only four points separate the two teams. So this next hill is really do or die for not only Team Queso, but also Rise. Rushies both can get Oh, yes, sir. <laughs> can't get the third. I was about to though. say, he can't get, yeah, he can't, he can't, get, he can't get the third. <laughs> Eventually, it catches up to you, and that's going to be a good one right there, depending on what they do. As now they're going to have a few seconds with a man advantage. Crystallize going down, losing that drop shot. Is it going to be out and grabbable? Yes, it is. Great flash there for a few seconds, but it's only going to stall for a few seconds. They lose the numbers left. They lose the numbers right. They lose the full positioning as Inzum just trying to buy a couple more seconds there. It's not total disrespect, even though I could be wrong. He's just trying to gain a couple more seconds, bleeding that player out as Rush is on the other side of the map. Great stun there. The damage is there, but the effects he's making sure to solidify that elimination. That's why I love that drop shot from Avexis. Nothing being flashy, not holding it to make a game-winning play, doing just enough. All right, 270 and counting. Rise very close to victory, and they've got a solid foothold here on the Cinema Hill, or should be Bandstand Hill. Avexis, these two kills matter, but problems picks up Avexis and now can slowly but surely push through. Inzim also down. Team Queso, still an opportunity to tie this thing up. Now, we will be going to another hill for sure. Rise can't win off this, neither can Team Queso. So this is going to come down to the wire. Last push. They lose this one. Rise is definitely out. Rushy's getting crossed up. Chavi knows he has to be careful. They're actually going to try to go ahead and maneuver through the center of the map. They're trying to get that top spawn. Rise needs to be careful here. If somebody gets caught slipping, if somebody is just straying away from the team game, it will cost them. And that's talking about all eight of these members. They try to brute force their way through. That. The downs Look are there. That. The shots. Detox holding his ground. Playing it absolutely perfect. Just not getting greedy. Beautiful. And Rise defend this hill and put themselves in the position to win. Yes, sir. Now just 10 points away from victory. Team K, so they have to sprint just to get a touch. And by the time they probably get to the hill, 
Rise might be at 299. So you got to get through, but that Lancer Fire is not going to make it happen. And ladies and gentlemen, Rise will close out the series 3-1 to one and ultimately secure their first victory in Gears Pro League for split number two, beating Team K. So it wasn't easy, but that man on your screen, MVP of Vexies, was the man who made it happen. Well done to him. And I'm seeing the chat. They may have had 99 problems with Team Queso. It was definitely not one of those at the end of the day. That was one of the first times I've ever seen 23,000 damage apiece. Yeah. The members of Rise. They were just destined. Fate to win this one. And Enzum, I think that was the biggest game of the series so far for him. Like I said, it's yeah. only going to take some time. We could say all he wants when they're losing these games, but at the end of the day, if they don't lose the series and he right. steps up big in that final game, he's right. doing just enough. And just remind people, he's coming over. He's coming out of retirement yet again, like Goldberg for uh, the millionth time on, on wrestling. And this is Enzum right there. So it's only, <laughs> it's only going to take him a little bit. Just give, give him some slack. Even I want to say that after I was just kind of like, not giving him some slack. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, look, Rise made some mistakes. They really did. Some uncharacteristic mistakes. And, and, and I think through all maps, they, they kind of made, you know, little mistakes stakes here and there but for the most part they got the w you know what well, not for the most part they did get the w and they still played very well you could see glimpses of that championship caliber roster shining through even despite some of the mistakes after all we had a long break and one of the longest breaks you had christmas break you got new years right even before that after the uh, fall major you still had that break so they're just getting warmed up team queso you can see the hunger they have though you can see how talented they truly are across all game modes so jacob this is a roster you know know new gen or not like these guys are hungry and they showed in this series you must take them seriously rise didn't skate through this series despite them not going to a map five they had to fight super hard and one thing is for certain when it came to control team queso is going to continue to be a true threat on any control map that they play on so teams will need to take note of that so rise just the point that i'm getting at yes they did show uh, you know a bit of rust at times they still get the w they're still the rise that you have to take seriously, and that is what matters. Starting off again, very, very similar last split, undefeated to kind of kick off the game. And for Team Queso, man, like you said, I, I think that's more of the story here. Enzum's return is one of them. Having a little bit of show of him game, so we're going to follow that one along, seeing how he builds himself up week after week, game after game, to try to return to that same form he was in last time he competed but on the side of team queso if they're able to put up big fights like this against some of the elite teams in the league i'm definitely excited to see more i'm yeah. definitely excited you know what I, I may not like macaroni and cheese i may not like too many quesadillas <laughs> but i definitely love me some pizza yeah, so there's he, some love there 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 is some love there just i guess with light cheese or you, you definitely don't go with the mozzarella mozzarella I, I, yeah. I go with the extra cheese you know but i don't know if you can handle that you know three one there it is rise gets the big and you know good job to them really uh good job I, th I think both teams put up an excellent fight it was a great series and i'm excited i really am you know now i i do not want to see the only thing that i don't want to get the habit of is saying for team k so so close to victory it's so far away and the only reason why i bring that up is because you know the narrative i had of, with chavi with fire and ice you know they were always so close to winning always so close uh but they never beat a pro league team even during the major they didn't beat a pro league team they beat a challenger team who you know obviously ended up winning their spot into the fall major they did beat them but they uh they didn't beat any pro caliber team so for chavi uh and, and just team queso as a whole I do want to see them get some victories this time around and, and ultimately make some uh, some magic happen because Team Queso, they're a great organization, and then I think the uh, the four members are are relatively solid. But yeah, going back to Rise's success, Vexy's really stepped it up, and, and I'm glad to see that. He he is carrying the torch for Rise, and he has been for some time. Yeah, I, I'm, I can be corrected if I'm wrong, but I don't think Rise has had a team that didn't have a Vexy since the game correct. into Gears Esports in the very beginning. So even though Rise's colors are red, that blood is definitely deep in Avexis. That Rise blood just definitely runs deep. And I, and I don't think he's going to quit until he brings home a champion. And even then, that's just going to fuel him to keep on going.
Oh, absolutely, a hundred percent. You know, but that but that championship is going to hit a bit different, though. If if he gets it, it's going it's going. He he might shed a tear. I might shed a tear too alongside him, man, because he has fought so hard, so hard to bring a championship to rise, and so close many times, but yet so far away. Right? That's a narrative for multiple multiple teams and in multiple occasions. But hey, first series is done, and I hope you enjoyed it. It was great for us. We love seeing it, and I hope you love yep. seeing it as well. Uh, congratulations to Rise for getting that victory three to one. They start up their pro league flawless, and they're on their way to be a back-to-back -back champions when it comes to Pro League as a whole.